In this module, we're going to talk about line notation describe, and how to describe the galvanic cell. And we're also going to talk a little bit about free energy. So first of all, line notation is just a shorthand way of describing a galvanic cell. And so the convention is always is that the anode is always on the left, the anode is where oxidation occurs, and the cathode is on the right. Um, we're going to use a double vertical line like this to separate the anode from the cathode. And this represents you know, whatever allows the ions to, to travel between the two half cells, a porous plug or a salt bridge usually. Um, single lines represent um, a phase boundary, solid, liquid usually, something like that, maybe gas. So what we do is we start out on the very left with what the anode electrode, the piece of metal that's right here is made of. In this case it's iron, so we put iron solid, then a single line because it's there's a phase boundary and what's inside of this half cell here, it's iron 2, um, aqueous iron 2. And these are all one molar, they're standard st states. Then we have our double line representing the porous plug, and then we have what's in the, the, um, the cathode half cell, and everything that's in there is hydrogen ion, manganese 2, and permanganate in, in this particular example. Then we have a sink line representing the phase boundary between the solution and the electrode. And then we have the anode electrode material, in this case, inert platinum. So when you're asked to describe a galvanic cell, make sure it includes all these parts. Um, the cell potential, in this one it's 1.95 volts. The balanced cell reaction, that's this right here, the redox reaction. The direction of electron flow, going from anode to cathode, right there, see the arrows. Um, labeling the anode and the cathode. And what's in each of these electrodes and the compartments. So the iron is, solid iron is this anode electrode, and there's iron two in here. This is pl platinum electrode here in the cathode, and hydrogen ion manganese two, and permanganate. So all of that has to be in a complete description of a galvanic cell. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the work, work that we can do by moving, an elect, by moving electrons through a wire. And how much work we can do depends upon the electromotive force. And what that is, it's the potential difference between, any two, between two points in the circuit. Okay. Um, and that's, that's gonna be in volts. And that's gonna, that, what that is, that describes E of the cell, the, the potential of the cell. And so that's the, the potential of the cell is equal to the work over the charge transferred. Now, because work is, if the cell does work, if it you know, does work on the surroundings, then W is going to be negative for it. But we know for a, a cell to be spontaneous, it has to have a positive uh, cell potential. So we have a little negative sign here to make sure the signs work out. Now, the total charge when n moles of electrons is transferred is equal to the number of moles times the charge on one mole of electrons. The charge on one mole of electrons is called Faraday's constant, and at least to five sig figs, it has this value here, 96,485. And you guys would do well to memorize or put on your card that number. Units of Faraday's constant are coulombs per mole, charge per mole. But if you look at, look at the units of, of this, okay, so the cell potential is volts, work is joules, charge is coulombs. If you rearrange this a little bit, coulombs is joules over volts. So a lot of times it works out to write coulomb, uh, Faraday's constant as 96,485 joules over volts, moles. or joules over volts. Sometimes you don't put the moles in there, joules for volt. Um, all right, so that's Faraday's constant. Now, the E of the cell is equal to the work max, and that's the maximum amount of work that, that can, it can be done. Okay, in real life, any galvanic cell will do less work than this this number right here because there's always some loss, some dissipation, some friction. You can never absolutely perfectly convert all of this potential into work. And the charge is NF. So if we write this like this, rearrange it just a little bit, 
we see that the maximum amount of work that can be done by a cell, and remember this is the theoretical maximum, is equal to negative NFE. Negative, the number of moles of electrons transferred times Faraday's constant times the cell potential. But we also know that the maximum amount of work that can be done by a process is equal to delta G for that process. So we can say that del delta G is equal to negative NFE of the cell. All right, so now let's look at this. Spontaneity. We know that for a process to be spontaneous, delta G must be negative. Because of this negative sign here, that means E must be positive for spontaneity. Now, if delta G is equal to neg negative NFE of the cell, then delta G zero, remember that means standard conditions, is equal to negative NFE of the cell. Standard conditions here again mean 25 Celsius. One molar is the concentration of any solute in the solution for standard conditions. We also know from before that delta G zero is, a neg is equal to negative RT ln of K at equilibrium. So we can say, because these are the same on the left, we can set this equal to that, and we get this. NFE of the cell, E0 of the cell, is equal to RT ln K of the cell. Or we'll rearrange it a little bit, we can get a relationship here between E0 of the cell and natural log of K, RT over NF ln K. Pretty useful. So we know we're going to now do a couple of examples where we use delta G equals negative NFE of the cell, and also this one here, the relationship between E of the cell and K. So, oh, before we do that, a lot of times you'll see it written like this. Watch. If you write E0 of the cell equals RT over NF, T, T is 298.15 Kelvin, R is 8.314, you know Faraday's constant. So you can, if you put these numbers in, you get the, a it's basically a constant, 0 0.02569 volts over N. N is the number of moles of electrons transferred, L and a K. A lot of the times we write this in terms of log base 10 of the K, log base 10 of K. It ends up that when you convert between natural log of K and log base 10 of the K, this number becomes 0 0.05916 to four sig figs. So we have E0 of the cell is equal to 0 0.05916 volts over N log base 10 of the K. Remember though, this is only good at 25 Celsius because we put 298.15 in here. So there it is. Good one to know. All right, so now let's do a couple of examples. <clears throat> What's delta G zero for this process here? This is a redox reaction where nickel is being oxidized and lead is being reduced. What we do, here's the process. We write down each of the half reactions the oxidation half reaction is nickel. And we look up the standard reduction potential for that, that process. Um, we look up the redu standard reduction potential for nickel two, and that's negative 0.23 volts. So because this is the oxidation half reaction, we flip this around, change the sign. We look up the standard reduction potential for the reduction half reaction, that's this right here. And we just add up the two E's of the, the half reactions to get E zero of the cell. 0 0.10 volts. To find delta G0, we just use negative NFE e of, ne negative NFE of the cell. So negative, now watch. The two here, okay, see that where that comes from is with these balanced half reactions, we see that two moles of electrons are transferred, okay? That's where this two comes from. That's Faraday's constant, and we just figured out E0 of the cell. Plugging in, we get negative 1.9 times 10 to the fourth joules, or negative 19 kilojoules. We just found out delta G0 of this half reaction. The other thing we can do at this point is we can find K, the equilibrium constant. So let's do it for a different reaction. So here iron is being oxidized to iron 2 and silver is being reduced from silver to silver ion to silver. So again, we look up the two half reactions. The reduction half reaction is this, silver being reduced. We look up the standard reduction potential for silver, 1.99 volts. Iron is being oxidized to iron 2, so we look up the standard reduction potential for iron 2, flip the equation, change the sign. So we calculate E0 of the cell by adding those two, we get 2.43 volts. And now, because we know that um, E of the cell is equal to 0 0.05916 log base 10 of the K over N, rearranging a little bit, we get log of K is equal to this. Two moles of electrons are transferred. That's where this two comes from, is this two right here is this. 
this is E0 of the cell, 0 0.05916. Plugging in, we get 82.2. That means, or roughly, so K is equal to 1.4 or so times 10 to the 82nd. Yeah, huge, which is it's common for these, these redox reactions.